NBC 12 News at 11 starts now. A new milestone tonight. The U.S. now reporting the most coronavirus cases in the world with more than 83,000 Americans infected. And another grim milestone, the number of COVID-19 deaths now exceeds 1,000. The economic fallout has led to a record number of Americans seeking unemployment benefits this week. Good evening and welcome everyone. I'm Kurt Autry. A lot to digest today. The numbers here in Virginia showing the same trend. More than 46,000 Virginians filed for unemployment in the last week. That's an all-time record. This as another death is reported at Canterbury Rehab and Healthcare in the West End, bringing the state's death toll now to 13. The number of confirmed corona cases jumped to 460, with Henrico remaining the hardest hit in Metro Richmond with at least 21 cases. And late today, we learned about the first positive case at McGuire Veterans Hospital in South Richmond. And tonight, we're learning a resident at yet another Henrico assisted living facility has tested positive. Beth Shalom Senior Living confirms a resident at their Parkside facility has COVID-19 and was transferred to a local hospital. The facility says they're hopeful this is an isolated case and they're working closely with the health department to contain any spread. As we have all week, we have live team coverage for you. Brent and AJ are on your side tonight working new angles to get the latest on the impact here in Central Virginia. But first, we're going to break down the numbers nationally as the number of infections skyrockets. Tonight, Alice Barr reports on the latest efforts to slow the spread, while the Senate approved stimulus package now goes to the House for approval. Tonight, the United States has the most reported coronavirus cases in the world, with more than a thousand now dead. And on the eve of a critical vote, the House set to approve a $2.2 trillion emergency coronavirus relief package. President Trump looking to reassure America. But I think you'll see a very fast turnaround once we have a victory over the uh, the hidden enemy. As hospitals struggle to keep up with the rising tide of patients, more than 3 million Americans filed for unemployment last week, a record number twice as bad as expected. But it's a lot of jobs, but I think we'll come back very strong the sooner we get back to work. You know, every day that we stay out, it gets harder to bring it back very quickly. The president continuing to push for reopening the country, at least in less affected areas, as the chairman of the Federal Reserve promises to prop up the economy economy with unprecedented emergency lending, predicting a sharp recovery. There's nothing fundamentally wrong with our economy, quite the contrary. Stocks rallied again today after the Senate approved the massive relief bill, and Speaker Nancy Pelosi said the House would do the same tomorrow. It will pass with a strong bipartisan support. The bill includes billions of dollars for hospitals, small businesses, major corporate loans, and state and local governments, as well as increased unemployment benefits and $1,200 checks sent by mail or direct deposit to Americans making less than $75,000 a year. A lifeline expected to be sent out within three weeks for millions of Americans struggling to stay afloat. Those direct payments double to $2,400 for couples who make less than $150,000 a year with an additional $500 for each child. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. This weekend, President Trump going to Norfolk. He will be seeing off the floating hospital, the USNS Comfort. The 1,000-bed ship is setting course for New York City. Like the military hospitals that are now being set up, the Comfort will open beds to non-coronavirus patients, freeing up that space in local hospitals to treat patients with COVID-19. Right now, health officials in New York City are putting out a call for more hospital beds as well as more doctors and nurses. New York City is the epicenter for the disease in this country. The Richmond Police Department now dealing with its second case. The police chief says a male officer tested positive today. That officer in self quarantine and we're told he is expected to make a full recovery. Chief Smith says the department had to move more than a dozen employees to self isolation as a result, and they're now making some staffing adjustments. On Monday, the department announced its first officer had tested positive. She too is recovering at home and should make a full recovery. 
Tonight, we're seeing a huge outpouring of support from many of you who just want to show your appreciation to first responders and those battling on the front lines of this pandemic. From meals to free lodging, we're hearing about efforts all across the Commonwealth of people reaching out to people. Tonight, new at 11, Brent Solomon live in Richmond with a look at some of those efforts. And Brent, share with us what you're learning. Yeah, Kurt, we're at the Rosie's in Richmond right now. The casino here and the one in New Kent are all closed, but that's not stopping them from showing their gratitude. While our facilities are closed, we have the capability to help others. So some of the workers who have been sent home with pay are stepping up to come back and prepare food, not for customers, but for first responders. We'll be making meals in the Rosie's kitchen, just the kind of things that we normally make, burgers, pizza, stuff like that. And we'll be packaging them so that firefighters, police officers, nurses, doctors, anybody, grocery store workers, that's really out there on the front line every day helping everybody else. They're starting April 1st with the goal of preparing some 20,000 meals. They're not alone. We pre-made the meals, so they was already boxed up. We did curbside service. The Ricky Johnson and Friends Foundation teamed up with Golden Corral to feed first responders Wednesday. Now everybody have to help each other. Gurdip Jaswal manages Oya Motel in Petersburg. The chain is reserving a section of its rooms to give first responders free lunch lodging if they need it. Sometimes you, they can't go home, so they can stay here in the area. They don't have to be driving like about an hour, two hours. Everybody, some people are driving like a two hour to the yard, to the hospital, so especially in the Petersburg area. People are driving from north to Petersburg, so they can stay. They don't have to go back and forth. It's just our way of helping out. And some national chains are also helping out. Starbucks and Krispy Kreme both offering freebies to those who are working on the front lines. And to them all, we say thank you tonight. Live on your side in Richmond, Brent Solomon, NBC 12. Thanks, Brent. The Ricky Johnson and Friends Foundation also collecting and giving away vitamins as well as toiletries for seniors and children in the area. If you'd like to donate or receive from this group, their office is located at 1804 East Belt Boulevard in South Richmond. We've placed all of that info for you on the NBC 12 News app. Well, when it comes to buying or renting a home, many of us want to see what we're getting into in person. But at a time when social distancing has become the norm, realtors are having to rethink their traditional workflow. Tonight, new at 11, AJ Nuoco on your side with how Local real estate companies are adjusting. If you're looking for a new home right now with COVID-19 in mind, your first tour might be through a screen on your computer. We're not telling you not to go look. We're not telling you to not rent your properties, but we are telling you that things are look a little different now. Showing off homes through virtual tours has been a part of the real estate business for years, but property manager Nelda Hilton tells me the real estate community is relying more on this technology in an effort to maintain social distancing. So everything is practically done online, so it wasn't too much of a change for us. The National Association of Realtors encourages realtors to enforce existing executive orders and to avoid open houses that could draw out crowds of more than 10 or more people. But realtors can still show off property in person at their discretion. Client stay in their car until we open the doors. And once they get in there, we'll do let them do a self showing of the property. So we will let them in, let them walk around the property and see the house, and then we'll keep our six foot um, distance. As the COVID nineteen situation continues to develop, Hilton expects people on the hunt for homes to continue looking and people who are renting to stay put. They're still going to continue to buy. People are going to continue to rent. Um, I don't foresee anybody trying to break a lease to get out to get into something else because it's too risky right now. And if you're planning on selling, Hilton says you're likely to experience a slowdown in the market. So we're not showing any properties that has tenants currently living in. So if a tenant wants to get out of their lease or they're not renewing their lease, we can't do any showings prior to them vacating and us resetting the property just to protect each other. In terms of keeping your home, Hilton tells me homeowners who have a mortgage payment coming up who may have trouble paying it during this pandemic should call their mortgage company immediately. For now, On Your Side in Richmond, AJ Nwoko, NBC 12 News.
Time now for a quick look outside as we get ready for a little bit of a warm up tomorrow. Jim Duncan standing by in the first forecast center with details. Jim. Yeah, we'll check it out right now. It is quiet out there. Central Virginia Metro Richmond now 54 degrees with a eh, mostly cloudy skies. We are looking for increasing chances of rain though. Not so much tonight, more tomorrow here. You get a bigger picture. You can see a few sprinkles showing up out there off to the east of Richmond. And your full forecast coming up in a few minutes. I'll have all the details on that rain tomorrow night and the cooler temperatures to start the weekend. All right, we'll check back. Thank you, Jim. It's a milestone worth celebrating. A 12 year old girl wins her fight with cancer, but social distancing meant celebrations had to take on a new form. Coming up, the parade that her neighbors staged in her honor. But first, a woman's COVID-19 test sent all around the country, and now she has no idea when she'll get results. We'll explain why when the news continues.